he's a close personal friend of mine, uh, so I know him in a different way than maybe a lot of people do. I don't read a lot of the press, to tell you the truth. Um, when it comes to the racetrack, he's here to do business and win and beat everybody, and he's got a different, he's got, a, he's got his game face on, and, and people who don't know him in a personal way might think that he's cold and hard and ruthless or whatever they say, I don't know. Um, but, but that's really not true. Uh, it's just it's what you gotta do to win races year after year after year. It was another thing that everybody talked about was your ability to zero in and focus and block things out, which people, you know, you weren't the coziest guy to cozy up to at the track. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just, that's just how you worked. Yeah, but as, I, as we just went through, I mean, I, I was there to focus and to do a job and I can't get cozy with guys that, that I, I'm, I'm there to kill on the racetrack, you know, and move out of the way if I have to or run into them. I, you know, that's just not me, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't care for acquaintances. I have friends or I have enemies and there ain't nothing in the middle, so and I can't be too friendly with guys that I need to, to you know to crash yeah to, to do whatever I need to do to, to beat you know so that, that just doesn't work for me never has that's just the way that I am so you know I'm either a friend or or uh, I'm an enemy and anything in between is just a big waste of time if you ask me yeah we were teammates you know but you know we were, we were both really focused on what we were we were doing uh, at the time I mean we didn't really you know didn't really become friends or hang out or anything like that, you know, like you do with some folks. But, uh, you know, we definitely, I never really got much, much flack from him or, or, you know, had to put up with some of the stuff that some guys do, you know, from Matt. But He is, can be a good guy. He can be a complete asshole at times, most of the time with me. But it was because what it was between us, you know, and, and uh, that's what, that's what made, it wasn't just the racing on the track that made it, you know, special. So it was how we got along most of the time and how we didn't get along. And, uh, but, you know, we were the first to congratulate each other. He's a tough guy to get to know, but I think if, uh, if anybody who kind of wandered through the paddock and bumps into him on occasions, actually knew Matt. He's, he's, he's a laid back guy. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, but when he's at the track, it's 100% business. And when the job's done at the end of the weekend, maybe he's a little bit different person, but he's, uh, he's, a, he's a competitor at the, at, at the very top level. How he can flip it from being, you know, real close and personal, you know, joking around to flipping it on and this is their job, this is what we do, and it's game time. The most interesting thing to me is that the guy was the total warrior. So he was just not racing you on the racetrack. He was racing you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. I'm convinced that a word never came out of his mouth without a calculated effect. We're talking to John Ulrich and asking him to reflect on your racing career. And he brought up the subject of the, the mental, the mental aspect of the game that and many people will say that racing is more up here between the ears than it is between the tire and the pavement and the throttle and that you were uh, a very much a student of that mental game and applied mental strategies to your opponents yeah for sure I mean because I agree, I mean, racing's between the ears. There's a lot of good motorbike riders out there, and I could sit here and name a number of them. There's a couple that I raced this year that I just, uh, and you know, and I like the guy, so I will, I will say his name. I think he's a good guy, Ben Bostrom. There's a guy there that lives a completely different lifestyle to me, 100%, but that's a guy there that I feel, if he really got his sh shit together 10 years ago, can ride a motorbike fantastically well and, and could have, won a lot. I mean, he's a guy that went on a six or eight win, win streak in World Superbike, you know, um, back in the day when he was over there. And, you know, and to me, 
he, he's obviously happy doing what he's doing. But to me, if you're there to race and you're there to get the most out of it, then do whatever it takes to get the most out of it. And then if you're finished with it, then move on and go and do something else. So, you know, there's so many guys out there that I feel that if they could have mentally got with the program, Matt Maladden wouldn't have won as much as what he won. So, you know what I mean? Of course, I'm happy that I've won a bunch of races and all the rest of it, but you said it right at the start. It's, it's, it's between the ears. It's, it's up here that the big difference is up there. And, uh, you know, I remember being in races with Ben, even with Ben, and I know Ben's a, a good athlete and trained hard and worked hard, but I remember being in races with Ben and it was hot. Uh, Virginia, even Virginia last year where they disqualified us in the end anyway, or Atlanta or where it was hot. Two thirds of the way through the race and it's miserable, hard work, absolutely wide open, going as hard as I can and thinking, man, I just love this pull in right now. And then you're just like, but I know that if I'm hurting this bad, he's got to be hurting more. So just push hard, go hard. And you know that in the end, you're going to break that rubber band. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of times with Ben, it happened. You watch a lot of races on tape. You, you can, you know, you can, you see it a lot of times, push, 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 push. And you just, I, I seen that pit board going out, going out, going out, plus one, plus 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 2, 2.5. By the time you got up to four seconds, I'll say with Ben, a lot of the times it'd go, ting, it'd go. And then just push and keep going. You know what I mean? That happened a lot with Ben. Huh. People, people may not want to admit that, but go back through and have a look at the tapes and see exactly what happened. And I knew that, you know, that, uh, that, um, and, and he also had championship in the back of his brain. So he got to a point where he was a little bit too uncomfortable having to run that pace and he decided to shut off. He's three times super bike champion. That's why I did that before. So, you know, so it, it, was, it was pretty cool, you know. And yeah, so many things go on in racing, man, up, up here that, uh, that, and there's so many people that could do a lot better if they figured it out. <laughs> Uh, they they really could. There are a lot of good motorbike riders out there. You know, a lot of good motorbike riders, but not not a lot of people get it together completely. Mm -hmm.